really excited. Let this excitement. I don't really. I've just been wearing it. Like in um, junior high, I would wear some Mardi Gras beads and like a necklace that I had made like every day to school. Like I would just mix them up on according to what I wore. Um, and it kind of just eventually got down to this one, and I just kept wearing it, and it just kind of became my little trademark. And I actually was I don't wear it all the time now. And so I had my earrings on this morning, and I was like, you know what? Like, this is an Olympic trial spot. I was like, I have to wear my necklace. I did. Could you tell? It's very, very well done. Plastic. And then you said, when I spoke to you in December, I was like, you said that the 1500 last year, you knew it was going to be like this. So I went into this and made sure to work on those areas that I need to fix. Not as much as I thought, really. Um, you know, the train, my train's been different, but it's, it's more just been fine tuning. I've just been, you know, the confidence I gained. Like last year was just such a game changer for me that I think this year was a good indication of how I would handle it. You know, with having a target on my back and being a favorite and seeing how I would handle the pressure. And I think, you know, it just, Terrence has done a great job preparing me. It's a good indicator of me being able to control my emotions and at the end of the, end of the day, get the job done when it needs to be done. Or are you this, are you this San Diego is your hometown? Yeah. Um, you go back and forth. Right. I mean, how, how do you work? Right. I'm from San Diego. That's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, I'm part of the Mammoth Track Club. So in the fall and then in March, we did our altitude training in, in Mammoth Lakes, California. And then... Um, the rest of the time we're in San Diego. So, but they're breaking ground on a track in Mammoth, so we, we, end up, we might end up spending a little more time up there now that there will be a track. So do you have a, you have a residence at home in San Diego? Yes. What I'm just renting. Um, University you know, Heights. There with me day in, day out. University um, Heights. My boyfriend, Pablo Solaris, is also a resident. Are you in University, University City? City? Uh, yeah, University uh, Heights. Up in uh, like North Park area. Oh, North Park. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, you know, University City. How long have you been there? How long have you been there? This is my third year. You, get, you probably don't get back to Indiana very often, do you? I don't. And actually, I have about 20 of my family members out here. They all flew out and are renting two houses nearby. So I've been spending a lot of time with them, which has just been awesome. It's kept me really calm and being around my family. Like it's just been a lot of fun. So um, at the end of the season, though, I'll go home and we're having a big family reunion. And last year, I got the key to the city, which is pretty cool. So we'll see if we can top that this year. Is it sometimes hard for them to process their one-time basketball player is now running? in the Olympics, it's just, it just just seems like a disconnect. Um, I don't think they care. I think they're just they're proud. They know that I'm doing something special in the support of the community. Um, and even in you know, so I see people in San Diego have only been a few years, but their support is just tremendous. And I, I can't thank anyone enough. But my hometown, maybe we'll get a question. Yeah, Morgan, you, uh, I kind of follow up on David's question. I kind of follow up on David's question. I live in San Francisco, so I the media's kind of picked up in the last year on the theme of you being a small town farm. How much do you think that work ethic has stayed over? Because you've talked to me several times about how hard you work. So how much of that work ethic did you pick up these women? And how much do you think that that's Sure. You know, that's one of the beauties of hindsight. Like, I would have never thought. You know, it's funny when I talk to my family now. I'm like, yeah, they think we're country. It's like, I didn't think I was that country at the time. But now that I live in San Diego, I'm like, okay, maybe we're a little bit country. That's just, and a lot of that's from my dad. My dad's very, you know, strict and into details, and I worked for him a couple summers, you know, hauling mortar and carrying bricks and all this manual labor, but just, you know, learning that if you want a good outcome, you have to be strict and diligent with the work that you put into it, and honestly, I think that has carried over. What's the biggest difference between San Diego and And so seeing all these fast races where time after time they're running something more. Besides the weather. Like, okay, like, I'm going to go get in this race, and, you know, if I'm I mean, there's a lot of little things. Things. It's just, I just have, Plymouth is just a very small community, so everyone knows the gossip, you know, people know my mom and my grandpa, so it's kind of a very tight-knit community, where obviously San Diego is a much bigger community, and the track is a little bit of a smaller, lower level thing there, so it's not like, you know, sometimes I'm running in Balboa Park, though, and people tell me good luck and notice me a little bit, so it's kind of cool. Do you have any chance to be, be as big a deal as Scott Skiles in Plymouth? To be a Scott Skiles? To, to be as big as Scott Skiles oh, yeah. in Plymouth? Um, That's a good goal. I think that should be a good goal. I have my Diamond League trophy in the in a trophy case at the high school, though. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, to start. Do you still play basketball? We play, we actually, like, runners are not the most athletic people in the world, and especially being with a bunch of marathons.
marathon runners, we play horse every now and then. And it's just really funny because I, 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 me and my teammate John Pierce kind of dominate that. But um, <laughs> those poor marathoners just can't get their legs play now. Um, We have a, a gym, Snow Creek Gym, is where we do our weightlifting. So if we have some energy afterwards, we'll do some pickup games. Something a little more serious when you guys are talking about how strong the distance team is and how strong the American distance women are this year. And yet, the simple back is with some of the times coming from like out of Africa. Yep. Considerably faster than you guys have run. Yep. How do you feel that? How are you going to bridge that gap between now and August? You know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Me personally, I just know that I have a, a learning curve, and for me to run 401 already is pretty significant. Um, you know, mentally and, and physically, I'm just in the best condition I've ever been in right now. Um, and I don't know, I don't want to be running 356 right now. Um, I don't know if I can sustain that after August. You know, there's training cycles, and my coach is one of the best in the world, and he knows what he's doing, and he's going to have me ready to go when I need to be. Or you're not to belabor the trip you know, point uh, it from the world last year, but are you, uh, but, you know, I've been is it difficult to not year, race with a chip on your shoulder? Are you, you know, racing with a chip on your shoulder? Not at all. Um, I honestly what don't, I, you know, I, I brought it up in there, but I honestly don't think about it at all. Like, more it was just an unfortunate accident, and it was really no one's fault. It wasn't my fault. And, you know, having made this Olympic team and, you know, winning the Diamond League title last year, it's like still I still have a lot of good things to happen, and that's just but that said, with that you know, having the diamond league title and without a world medal to show for it, do you feel like you really got something missing? No. There were times when I was like, do I even want to run anymore? I'd rather have that when you're questioning what Bob Larson, Bob, I'm sorry, Bob, Bob Larson was saying that you know the runners are going up and down the altitude. Some like to stay up in altitude more, and, and, and more middle distance people like to come down more to see themselves. Is that is that true with you? Do you feel like you need to get down out to sea level and see? Speed a little bit more than yeah, I think so. You know, obviously with with Med being part of our team, like we don't see him very much in San Diego. Yeah, so they're doing a lot of work uh, at altitude. Yeah, You know, Anna and I need to get down on the track because that's where we race all the time. And, and honestly, the altitude is important for us, but it's not as important as it is for some of those distance runners. So how do you split the time? I mean, is it six and six months or is it eight? Um, and four? You know, it's, it's not that much, and it also depends on the weather. Like last winter, we were really getting hit with the snow, and so that's why this year we're like we're spend more time in San Diego. Well, of course, this year is really mild. So we could have spent more time there, but, you know, honestly, with the way I've been running, it, it doesn't seem to have had a negative effect. So it's, I think it's as long as we're getting the work done. We're, we're in San Diego, we're doing track at all the um, We do it, yeah, at the Olympic Training Center. Sometimes we use the track um, up in La Jolla at UCSD for some, like, afternoon workouts. And then you run at Babo Park for your... Yeah, Babo Park, Mission Bay, um, Penasquitos Canyon. Uh, answer a couple questions about the race today, and you know, I guess first just talk about how it was, where you were at. Any uh, just, for some of the people, it was rough out there. It looked like, and for you, you had a pretty good position. It sure, and you know, I, like I said before, like the last two rounds, like being in the front, I just I felt awesome up there. Like I just felt like in such control, and I wanted to be in the front. But with that win, I just didn't know. If, I didn't want to be fighting a fight the whole time and just kind of letting everybody else get a free ride. And so I was trying really hard to kind of like tuck in and just hold back a little bit um, because I knew that it was going to kind of come down again to the, like a long grind. That, and my original plan had been to run a hard last 700. Like I was just going to go for it. But with the win, we had kind of changed our decision. And so, um, but I'm confident in my closing speed. So I knew even if it came down to a 200 meter kick, that would still be okay. So, um, you know, just, it was all about just keeping my cool and knowing that I always had an extra gear there if I needed to use it. Oh. Oh, sorry, because, yeah, you just never know if someone's going to move up, so it's like, even though I'm pressing, I have to make sure that if, you know, if someone were to make a hard move, that I would be able to respond. And I felt like I was always able to respond. To what was it like coming into the day? What, you know, thoughts going through your mind, going to the line, and, and what um, was your confidence at? You know, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's obviously very excited to be here and make the final. Um, some nerves were totally in there, but I just knew that with the work I had done, that as long as I ran smart, there's no way I was going to lose this race. And it wasn't even, I knew I was going to win the race. I knew I was going to make the team no matter. I was like, maybe one of these girls can beat me, but there's no way that I can three of them beat me as long as I don't have smart. And, you know, when I saw that we had broke away to that three, it's like, I wanted that win. I wanted it bad. It was like, when I crossed the line, I was like, I won. And then a second later, it's like, I'm in the middle of the trials. I was like, oh, because at first, it's like, it's just another race. But then finally, something. What is, what is